Hello everyone, it's Davide here and welcome back to Learning Finance. In today's video guys, I want to talk about Coinbase stock, Coinbase uh, direct listing IPO, which is supposed to happen today. I don't know actually precisely at what time the stock will begin to trade on the Nasdaq. Anyway, Coinbase, which if you know cryptocurrency, Coinbase is probably one of the easiest exchange to buy and sell crypto. And today is planning to go public. In today's video, guys, I want to actually show you the valuation, what you are buying today, what you should expect going on in the future. So is it a good investment? Should you buy the stocks today? We are going to see the valuation and then I will also tell you why actually and what drives me crazy about that because it's not the business. Okay, I give you a hint. It's not the business, but it's mostly how elite finance is actually screwing retail investors. I will talk about that as well. So the only thing I ask you guys is please leave me a like. It's very important and I thank you for it and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any new updates. Let's begin. All right, guys, so Coinbase, here we have the SEC filing, and then we have also the first quarter estimated earnings. Now, I'm not saying that they are saying completely random stuff, so if they say something, I expect to be pretty similar to what they say, uh, but anyway, estimated, okay? So bear in mind that. Anyway, let's take a look at the banner sheet quite briefly because I'm sure that a lot of other YouTubers have already shown you that. Anyway, Coinbase is interesting to see how in just one year they have doubled their cash position. They have obviously current assets above current liabilities, 5.3 billion against 4.2 billion. Not a lot of debt, okay? So here they have a little bit of lease, but it's just not much. Biggest part of the liabilities is the custodial funds, right? So the custody business of a Coinbase. Obviously, we saw how from 2019 to 2020, they just more than doubled the earnings. What made everyone crazy is that for just Q1, they are expecting $1.8 billion in revenue, approximately. Interestingly, the company in 2020 was already profitable, $322 million. And in their estimates over there, they say that for Q1, they are expecting around. 730 to 800 million. That's obviously huge in net income. Okay, so this is not gross. This is net income. And it's one of the highest net margin that I have ever seen in a company. So in terms of business, if they're able to maintain that is absolutely mind blowing. Okay, better than Facebook. And for me, Facebook business is one of the benchmark for efficiency in terms of margins, right? Adjusted a bit that one 1.1 billion that's more than 60 percent margin now obviously don't get fooled by it because this is not the true EBITDA it is adjusted EBITDA but I went through the numbers try to see what they were pulling off anyway you can consider the right EBITDA at around 40 percent margin okay so still very very great in terms of what the business is doing now the problem one of the main problem that comes out is that this is what the business is doing now one of the best moments ever we see Bitcoin just 63,000 per coin everything is going great for them at the moment right but we don't have much history in the history, we have seen that, for example, in 2019, the company wasn't profitable. And when they give their guidance, basically it's all about MTUs, okay? So monthly transacting users, high one will be around 7 million, mid 5.5 million, low 4 million. And just to give you an idea, this Q1, which has been very great, is around 6.1 million in monthly transacting users. So basically, let's say if they continue to do that, something like a mid scenario, we can consider and imagine around 7 billion in revenue 
for 2021, which is crazy. When we take a look at the valuation, it's 5x in revenue from 2020. Here, when I, do, I did the forecasts, rounds on numbers, I didn't put that growth rate going on in the future, but let's suppose that Coinbase will do something that a growth stock usually do, right? So 35%, 30%, 25%. So on average, over the next four or five years, we have a 26, 27% average growth rate for Coinbase. Adjusted a bit the margin, I told you that Q1, 61.11% according to what they said. I put them down to 50. In 2019, they were 44%, but going on in the future, just to have, uh, just to not go too crazy with those numbers, right? 50 is more than enough, in my opinion, to be a good business. And obviously, we end up 2026 with that valuation with 23.6 billion in revenue. And EV to EBITDA, I pointed at 18x because this is adjusted EBITDA, is not the real EBITDA. Usually a company like that could trade in a 25x multiple for the real EBITDA, but the adjusted EBITDA is higher in terms of margin, so I put a lower multiple in order to be in line with that. So that we have the adjusted EBITDA, 2026, 11.8 billion. Another interesting stuff is the net income uh, in 2020 was 28%. In this quarter, is estimated to be around 39-40% basically net margin. That's huge. Going on in the future, I put that at 35% and that the free cash flow to net margin, now I took 110%. Now, this is usually an average of what uh, tech companies do. The average of the free cash flow divided by net margin is between 100% and 140%. So to remain a little bit more conservative, I took 110. Anyway, we have two different valuations. So the first one, the EV to EBITDA valuation, it gives us an enterprise value, 177.6 billion in 2026, Cash minus debt, I took 10 billion more in excess, and we have the total market cap of around 190. Discount rate 12%. That gives a market cap today of 100 billion. So that's what uh, actually the market is pricing. That's why the price is, uh, the market cap is that high already today. Then with the DCF valuation is usually more conservative over there. I took a rate of return still 12%, perpetual growth rate after 2026 of 4%. And that gives us a today's company value of 86.5 billion. We don't know exactly, or I don't know exactly the total amount of shares outstanding. Anyway, that's the market cap, okay? 86.5. $56 billion. We do an average of those two and we get $93.6 billion and what the market should price today. So very near to actually the 100 billion mark that they set. Someone is going to 150, but anyway, that's on average why the market is pricing the company that high. So after we have seen that, obviously, is this an investment that I would like to take? Because First of all, let me say it clearly, I am not bearish on the business. I like the business. I don't know whether they will be able to continue to maintain those kind of margins going on in the future, but I like the business. I like the efficiency of the business. As of now, they have margins with, wow, congratulations, okay? You're not gonna see lots of businesses with the same margins. Now, what is the problem? And there is a big problem. And is the thing that actually makes me very angry with those kinds of IPOs. First of all, even though I don't speak much about all these kind of hype things and hype stuff, that doesn't mean that I actually didn't do them. Even though a lot of people are buying Bitcoin today, they discovered Bitcoin like four months ago, and now they talk on YouTube like they are the full experts. Well, for me, I discovered cryptocurrency back in 2018. This is an email, old email of Coinbase, which was obviously the first exchange that I have ever used in that world. 24th of February, 2018, this is 
in Italian because if you don't know I am Italian but anyway your purchases of 1000 euros in Bitcoin is now available on your fund Coinbase so I bought 1000 euros which is around $1,200 of Bitcoin back in 2018 that's when I first bought my piece of Bitcoin right the price back then was around 8000 euros per Bitcoin uh, so around $9,000 then obviously we had the price going lower uh, then going higher so Bitcoin all this kind of stuff Ethereum as well and back then I bought also Litecoin a little bit it's been a kind of funny world, right? Something that you were losing money, you were making money. Then I did also stupid stuff like, for example, BitMEX. I don't know how many of you know that, but I was trading, trying to speculate, sometimes even very stupidly with leverage on Bitcoin and Ethereum. Now, a young guy at university, right? Sometimes didn't know what I was doing put 5x 10x leverage I ended up sometimes losing also money but overall I have also made money just basically uh, stopping to do this idiotic stuff and just keeping a portion of Bitcoin and Ethereum there since 2018 to where is it today and back then the crypto market was even crazier than it is today I remember there was John McAfee which was a kind of controversial figure back then he was saying that if Bitcoin didn't reach 500k in 2018, basically it would have cut his penis off. So that's what he said, obviously, just to make you understand how much people like to talk. So be careful what you listen to out there. And that's the reason why I don't like to do hype videos. So what is that it drives me crazy about this IPO and why I'm actually not going to buy the stock? or at least I'm gonna watch but not buy today. Because the cryptocurrency market, guys, it, together with Coinbase, is something that as of now, 2021, is already, the cryptocurrency is already more than 10 years, but also Coinbase is very near to that kind of age, right? And they are now doing the IPO at $100 billion. Now, what that means, let's take a look at the largest company by market cap. Above the trillion dollar, we have just five companies. Then we have Facebook, 800, Tencent, Tesla, Alibaba. So uh, I would say that in the top 10 over there, we are above the 500 billion range. Then if we go on, we, uh, let's just scroll down a bit. So that means that today Coinbase with the IPO is going very near the top 100 companies in the world, right? And now this list comprehends like 4,777 companies. The full list of companies is more near to uh, 7,500, okay, of publicly traded companies all around the world. That's just to make you understand that just the top 100 companies actually deserves that valuation. And when we have a new IPO, which is already priced at 100 billion, well, if you are, I'm not saying you should be a genius, but if you think about that, you realize that real money here have already been made, guys. Have already been made. By who? Well, first of all, but that's fair enough, the management, right? The management deserves to make money if they do a great business. But then we have high net worth investors. So private investors, angel investors, private equity funds, venture capitalists, all these kind of guys they made lots of money with Coinbase. They got in early. We couldn't afford that as a retail investors. And believe me, for them, these IPOs, these kind of IPOs at high market cap are an exit opportunity and not a buy opportunity. So when they have this kind of stuff, they actually exit their investments and they have already made tons of money on it. So that's what drives me crazy. When I see these kind of IPOs are already priced at 100 billion, it makes me think that they are using us, retail investors, they are using the hype now between Bitcoin, they're using that scenario, which is for them is the best one. If you want to do an IPO, if you study corporate finance, you realize that that scenario is the best one for Coinbase. But for who? For them, 
not for us because they have already invested in it. So they are able to do the IPO as the highest possible market cap ever. But for us, that we have to join the investment now, it's probably the worst time ever to do a, a, an IPO for us, right? We like the opposite stuff. They need to sell, we need to buy. It's completely different. So that's why I'm actually angry to see this kind of valuation. I don't like them because money here have already been made. Coinbase was definitely a great business, but it was a very interesting investment opportunity when it was at $10 billion, $15, $20 billion. Not today, because today I'm buying $100 billion company, which uh, ahead of us, we have a lot of potential risks regulations we don't know whether the market of bitcoin crypto will continue to be that hot i'm not saying they will go back to zero but you know how the markets usually do right so a little bit of sideways movements uh, the interest drops volumes drops revenue can drop uh, competitors okay so as coinbase was the first and one of the main exchanges out there together with Binance and Kraken. Actually, at the moment, we have that Square came out, PayPal is coming out. Then who knows? Robin Hood has already come out. And maybe in two years, those guys, they can put commission fees to zero like they have done with stocks. And Coinbase at the moment is earning 96% of the revenues with commission fees. So lots of risks ahead of us. And if we take a look at just a simple balance between risk reward, we realize that for us, in my opinion, that that's just my opinion, the risks here at that valuation are way higher than the rewards because not all the companies can actually become a 500 billion company. Not all the companies can join the group, elite group of the trillion dollar company. So, so that's just to tell you that the real investment here has been made by private investors. So that's what I don't like to see. As a retail investor, it's way easier for a company to reach 50 billion than reach 1 trillion. In terms of Coinbase, if you want a 5x at that price, it means that the company should join the top 25 companies in the world. Now, you understand that that's way more difficult than do for a 10 billion to a 100 billion in market cap. So that's what I absolutely don't like about these kind of IPOs. They could have done it earlier and it would have been a very interesting investment to do. But at that price, guys, without the certainties that they will continue to do like that in the future because of risks that I told you. Well, for me, that's not the investment that I like to take as of today. I am not bearish on the business. I just don't like how these elite finance guys, in these cases, they screw retail investors to giving them a risk reward opportunity which is absolutely shit and then they are able to sell their investments because they have already made lots of money buying the company when the market cap actually was making sense when it was a real opportunity so that's what I don't like. That's my opinion. Leave me down a comment with your opinion. I hope you find the video interesting, guys. Subscribe to the channel and as always, have a wonderful day.